So um, today I will go through the tension test and we do normally aluminum T6061 and steel specimen, but for this specimen here, the gauge length is about two inches. We're going to mark up this two inches. Also, we have to measure the diameter. The diameter is around 0.5 inch. It doesn't, it doesn't hurt to take measurement two or three different location. Just make sure that it's really 0.5 or 0.504 or something. Just take measurement for that. Um, the next step we are going to use for this test, the extensometer. This is the extensometer. And normally you will find it installed. This guy is the extensometer. Normally you find it installed, but let's say that if you look carefully to this extensometer, you have those two teeth here. The distance between the two teeth is exactly one inches. And you have this small pin, so that keeps the distance for one, one inch. Once we apply, the, before we ab apply the load, we need to remove that pin. And once you remove the pin and apply the load, the teeth starts to open up and that will measure the deformation. This can uh, elongate for about one inch, but we're not gonna take it all the way to failure. We'll remove it before we get to the failure point. So let me put the pin back and I'm going to connect it to the machine in the connection point. So um, you just insert it to this and now it is very much secured. So now it's secured. So now it's ready to attach. So we are going to turn on the machine. And like always, we are going to turn on the machine, the power off now. I'm going to turn it on. So that's on. I'm going to turn on my MTS machine. This is on. I'm going to turn on my computer. So now we have the machines up and running. Um, I'm going to turn on the software, which is test work four. And once you turn the software, we're going to student one. The student one, I'm just click OK. And if you zoom here, we have the method we are going to use. You scroll down, uh, it says enter under empty estin style. See empty estin style, we're going to Extenso cross removal. So I'm going to click that guy, Extenso cross removal, and that's what you see right there. And then I'm going to click OK. And like always, I will need to reset the motor. So motor reset, and now it's ready to use. The next step is I want to install the specimen, and it's your call how you install it. Normally I install it in the bottom grip. So I'm going to install it in the bottom grip. Make sure to leave maybe half inch gap at the end and then tie it. Tie it really hard. And that's what I'm going to do right now. And then I'm going to remove the, um, uh, move the top grip down. Make sure that the grip are open here. And then I'm going to have to use the handset. This is green, just unlock it. So now it's green. I can move, move the top grip down. So I'm going down. Be careful, your students' fingers out of that. So you go down, again, leave about half an inch on the top. And once it's there, please put back the handset to the, its location. I'm going to tie the top grab, and I think I need to move it down more, so let me go down more, okay? Now, once I tie the top grab, I want you to look at the load. The load will start to go up. So I'm gonna tight now. It's now, this is my zero. And while you are tightening, now look at the load. It's already about 500 pounds, 600 pounds of the specimen. And definitely we're not gonna start from that load, so we need to release the load. And the way how we release the load is with the handset. So you need, this is, you apply tension force, you need to move the grip down. We're going to use the wheel and it's very sensitive. So let's move the wheel down and look at the load. You want the load between about 10 to 15 pounds. So I'm going down and slowly touch the, the wheel. It's extremely sensitive. And now this is about 100. I'm going down. There you go. So that's very much my zero should be acceptable for me. If you want to go down a little bit more, that should be fine. 
Um, and once you're done with that, put back the handset, lock it, so now we can control from the, uh, the software. Now the next step is we want to install the extensometer, and this is the extensometer. Again, make sure that the pen is there, this is the pen is right there, and then I'm going to install it. Uh, make sure that you, you can read the MTS, so if the MTS is facing you, and if you do that, either you put it like this or you put it the other side, but I prefer to do it like this. So you read the MTS, you have to put this back, and then let both teeth touch the specimen. I think the pen is not inside, so let's put it inside. So now, let's have both teeth touch the specimen, so I have it now, touch the specimen, and then I'm going to have this back, and now it's attached. So now it's attached, before you apply the load, you will need to remove the pen. Carefully, carefully remove the pen. Do not start the test with before you remove the pen, ever. You have to remove the pen. If you apply the load at this point, you will destroy the extensometer. So carefully remove the pen and just gently pull it very, uh, horizontally with angle 90 degrees if you can. So I'm gonna pull it gently and now very much it's out. And now we can start the test. So let's go now to the software. So I'm going to the software and you can read that. You have the option if you want to zero everything or so if you want to zero the load even though it's zero, but you can also zero it by right click, right click on the mouse, each channel, and then you can say zero channel. Right click on the cross set, zero channel. If you look carefully, this represents the load inbound, extensometer in inches, the amount it opens up the extensometer. Remember, it starts with an inch, one inch opening. And then the strain, okay? And the nice thing about this one inch, if it is displaced or deformed by 0.15 inch, so the strain is also 0 0.15, 0 0.15, because 0 0.15 over one, so that would be also 0 0.15. Okay, so now we're ready to go, and we're going to apply a load. And like always, this is run, so I'm gonna run here. It asks you for the diameter, and I'm gonna just say 0.504. Again, I think that's what's the reading. The grip separation, basically the grip separation is the distance between this grip and this grip. So you need to measure the distance between this grip and this grip. So I'm going to measure with the extensometer. You can use this side, I'm sorry, with the caliber. You can use this side here. So uh, I'm going up, and that's very much my reading. It reads about 2.64. So 2.64, I'm going to put 2.64 here. 2.64. And now the load starts to go up. Okay, you can change the, uh, X axis, the Y axis by clicking right click, and then you say to properties, and then I wanna change this from 0.4, and maybe I will make it 0.2. And then the Y axis, instead of 30,000, maybe I'll make it uh, 20,000. And then you click OK. So that you can see the line now, I'm gonna make this even smaller. Properties again, let's make this 0.1. And again, click OK. Okay, you can see the line, it's nice horizontal line, the load is about 6,000 now, strain is about 0.37. Um, again, we're not gonna use the extensometer up to the failure point, we will remove it at some point, the software will tell us to remove this, the uh, extensometer. And the removal point for this test is about 0.012 inches, so once this hits 0.012 inches, the software is gonna ask us to remove the extensometer and I think it's even more, it's 0 0.015. Now it says remove the extensometer. Remove it, don't hit okay. Extremely important, remove it. So now we need to remove the extensometer before we move forward. So again, do not hit okay, remove the extensometer. So I'm gonna remove the extensometer and take your time removing the extensometer, gently remove this side, this side, and we're not done yet, you have to put the pen back Again, this is, um, we don't want to destroy the extensometer. So put the pen back. Once you're done with all of this, and then put it aside. 
So we're gonna put this back, put it aside, and now we can hit OK. Again, please do not hit OK. We're gonna destroy the extensor meter. I'm gonna hit OK now. And now the, the load, the strain is taking readings from the cross set. It's not 100% accurate, but it's good for this class. Um, let's look at the specimen. So let's look carefully at the specimen. So at some point, it's going to start to neck. And basically, if you look at the curve, it's very much a typical aluminum curve. It goes straight, plastic region, keeps deforming. And let's go back to the specimen. OK. So now the load starts to go down. If you keep careful, the load starts to go down, which means that we are about to fail at some point, going to fail. So um, let's go back to the specimen. And now I think you can see the neck also now. And don't panic. So once start, the neck starts to form, um, you can expect it's going to fail at, at this time. Uh, so now we are about at the failure point. And it's going. If you look carefully at the readings that you have here, this is again, this is very nice load extension um, diagram. And basically, you can change it to stress, strain, and all of that. Um, also, you have the modulus. If you look at the modulus, 10,000 KSI, that's very good for aluminum because it's about you know, 11,000, this is 10,500, so very good results, that's, that's not bad. And then you can, if you want to save the data, you can go to file, and then you can do go to um, export preview for the specimen, and very much this is the text file that you can send it to your students. Look at this guy here. You have load, this is load, time, forget about it, extension, and stress and strain. And definitely we're not gonna give, get send all of this to the students. So maybe we can send them just load deformation because we want them to do some work. Okay, we're not gonna give them everything ready. So that's how you do it. You can save it on the desktop and then after that, copy it on a flash drive, email it to your students. Okay, so now let's talk about measurement for ductility measurement. I'm gonna take out the specimen. We need to move this up, so I'm gonna move it up, but this is gonna lock this. We'll unlock it, one of them. Let's go up. And now, I'm taking it out, and then this is out. Ask one of the students to measure the neck. So put it back, and then measure the neck. So I'm gonna measure this neck, and that will give you, for neck, for the, ductility calculation, measure this neck, which is percent reduction on the area. Also, you will have to measure the elongation and um, elongation of the specimen. And that's it. Thank you.